I guess this is it, huh? Well, it's been great. each other again soon. Your friend, Tommy. Welcome everybody to the Morph Amania podcast and we are here to do the Green Trees with good old Jason David Frank. I am humanoid along with the Doyf and it's me, Mighty Morphin Nicole Parker. Jesus <laughs> Christ, Nicole Parker from Mad TV. No, no, no. Well, yes, but I say Nicole Parker because she was the princess in Disaster Movie. Oh, right, right. I love her. She was great on that. Don't get me fucking started again, Adam. Otherwise, I'll slam your head in a goddamn fucking wall. By the way, speaking of that movie, <laughs> it was supposed to be like that because it's a parody. You can try. But anyway, <laughs> not, again, not again. Not again. Anyway, not again. Anyway, green series. <laughs> the story arc that introduced. Frank and well, though if it's calming down, episode one I'll end five. you. <laughs> it's episode one to five. Which produces our main man, Jason Frank. And no um, one will miss you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to Good old game. Tommy Oliver. Good old uh, Tommy Jason Oliver. David Frank, man. I I will openly say, so I I'll, quick disclaimer for the audience. We're not experts when it comes to television behind the scenes stuff we're just three fans uh old novice and uh virgin virgin thank you for how old I um who just love enjoying the show and joking around and we'll discover behind the scenes stuff as we go along because we do enjoy that kind of thing but again we're not experts that being said though when it comes to this specific episode I will probably have a lot more to say about the man himself than the behind the scenes facts, like, which is understandable. He is, he's a lot of man. Yes. Like, despite his, uh, his beef with Austin St. John, he's a great <laughs> man. Are we really going to jump into that right away? I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, despite his beef with Austin St. John. I, I don't know the details myself. I know it exists, but that's all I know about it. Like said, We're going like to have said, to get into it at some point. Eventually. Mm -hmm. For for historical purposes. Yeah, because we're just some f random fans talking about the history. Especially with the virgin here. I'd rather us not keep calling me the virgin. I did it as a joke. <laughs> no worries, the dead troop over here. Yeah. So anyway, let's get into this with the first episode. Green Whistle, part one. Part one, which is uh, subtitled... Let's... Out of control. Out of control. Out of control, thank you. And... Let's see here in the production info. Let's see. Uh, written by a lot of people, actually. Uh, I, I don't know if it lists uh, specifically who wrote which part, but uh, this is for all five parts. Uh, it was written by Gary uh, Blasberg, Stuart St. John, Tom Weiner, our favorite guy again. Tom Weiner! Tom Weiner. Yes! Cheryl, yes. Cheryl Saban. James Himes Saban's I, wife. Himes Himes' wife, yes. I believe she wrote all five parts, if I am correct. I remember seeing her for sure in the written by in part two. Yeah, part two. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also Mark Ryan and Cindy McKay, and directed solely by Robert Hughes. Mm -hmm. They put a lot of faith in him into making a pretty good five parter. Right. It, it's basically like if it's basically like if Power Rangers made a movie before you know they made a movie. Yes, That's it the first time it, it really that it it really stuck out for a couple different reasons. One, it was introducing a new ranger to the team, which of course was like uh, the the grand spectacle of the whole five parter, uh, introducing a new member to the team. But how 
I, I this is a genuine question to people out there. I want to see this in the comments as well, and I want to see this with uh, you guys as well. I want to hear your opinion on this. How many kids' TV shows have five parters? Back then, back then, and even now, I can't think of a single other epi- like, like episodic children's TV show that has more than a three parter. Honestly. I think Power like Rangers three... is going to do it, and X Men did on the original X Men, not X Men ninety seven. Well, technically, is you know what I mean. I think X Men ninety seven. Like, yeah, I, I do know what you mean. Uh, like the the original X Men ninety seven seasons. Um, it. I I, I do want to say it was like very serialized, just like the Spider Man show of that time. So it did definitely have. I I want to say the Spider Man show had the six forgotten warriors. Five parter or six parter? Oh. I, yeah, but it was all made up of uh, superheroes. Uh, another Fox show, actually, p- p- part That's of that lineup cool. of uh, S- S- Saban shows. Um, uh, it, it, but it wasn't like the Avengers type heroes. It was basically the Invaders, which are like the World War Two Avengers, with the the greatest speedster of them all, the Wizard. Oh God, the Wizard. No, that was a spot. No, with the wizard, yeah, and they got storm. Yeah, it, uh, it, it was the wizard. It was like Miss America. Um, a couple other old school heroes. I cannot remember oh, who they are. How fast do you think Wizard could piss? Very fast. Very fast, and th- th- they actually brought him into the Jessica Jones uh, second season of the n- Netflix show, and. and um, <laughs> Wizard, I believe you, okay? And they treated him like Darn. both dirty, but like funny at the same time. And, and oh, because of the, they basically made him out to be an overweight introvert yes. who yes. owned a mongoose, which was really cool, actually. You're talking about the old Spider Man show. I was talking about the one in 95, 90, uh, teamed up with that. And one time, or one where he Yeah, no, team. that's the show I'm talking about as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's just I'm this version of the wizard I'm talking about is from uh, the J- J- Jessica Jones TV show. The one from the uh, '90s Spider-Man cartoon is definitely way more, if not dead on, accurate to uh, the comics. Is that the same '90s Spider-Man TV show with like the the really weird Venom dream? Yes. Oh yeah, the really weird Venom dream, and I knew you were about to say the shocker line, probably. So, uh, <laughs> no, a huge hole. Just I'll put the clip the... in. Get back here, shocker! Shocker! You can't escape me. I'll chase you to the ends of the earth. And I will actually plug um, something that needs to get more attention that I think only has like one or two issues of uh, Godzilla Mendoza's uh, the, the the comic book uh, YouTuber uh, who is not a Spider Man guy. Uh, everyone says he is. He just likes uh, Spider Man a lot, but he's not a Spider Man uh, guy. The, the, the I say that for you. I say I say that for you, Xavier. Uh, um, but he uh, did a fan-made comic book on the 90s uh, Spider-Man uh, show. Uh, a, a continuation, basically, where Madam Web and Spider-Man uh, go looking for Mary Jane, basically, going through d- 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 different universes. Let's get to part one, finally. Uh, out, out of control. control. Uh, it... it it opens up with uh, the, the the gang basically in a uh, karate tournament there's, with there's uh, a martial arts ex- exhibition going on, and we actually open on Steve Blackman. <laughs> what? A, it's, just, it's it's just a teenager using the same sticks that Steve Blackman used, and all I could hear was. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were calling Jason C. Blackman. I was going to be like wearing his blood sport gear. No, 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 no. Jason is is uh, John Claude Van Damme. Oh, no, I'm not going to unsee that. Thanks, Adam. You're welcome. Austin uh, St. John Claude Van Damme. And so uh, in this exhibition, we see uh, J- J- Jason get, get getting ready. 
And then we get the first shot of the character. Insert the clip from Cool Cat. There he is! The most important character in uh in Power Rangers history. Like it, he did like to the point where he took over the show to the audience's annoyance for some seasons. And but honestly, whenever he popped up, it was always important. It was always an event. And he just he like a lot of like uh, I believe Linkara famously said uh, that like the main characters of Power Rangers are Bulk and Skull, like, and I do like have put some merit into that, but I think in reality the main character of Power Rangers is Jason David Frank's portrayal as Tommy Oliver. Like, he he always was I, I, in the beginning, but remember, right? like he he was the like he, he did become the leader later on and yeah. he did become a red which is like the number one sign of yeah, main we, character leader leadership sort of uh crowning because pretty much after the zordon era wraps up every single red is pretty much like hit with like the main character mallet and it's well except for rpm and generally when tommy shows up that's the case like in um in uh dino thunder in in Dino Thunder, which now that we're talking about this uh, season and this series, I will bring this up. Um, Dino Thunder was my first season. It's how I was exposed to Power Rangers. It, I think it may have been a episode of SPD where like they fight a magician, but I firmly believe Dino Thunder is what caused my fandom. And I firmly believe Dino Thunder is a is basically a soft reboot or soft remake of Mighty Morphin. But specifically, though, with uh, with Dino Thunder, because the, there are many theories that even the Power Rangers movie referenced that um, Zordon was a ranger himself. Yeah, but that um, was a different timeline. But, uh, no, I mean, even in the main canon, that he was a ranger that we just never see. Oh, right, right. I personally would like to see that, and my personal head canon is that he was the red in Go Ranger. Okay. Uh, well, I will uh, take things over real quick. Uh, uh, oh, wait, actually, we're still talking about uh, Jason David Frank, so why don't you give your thoughts? Because I probably have the least to talk about JDF with. I met the guy at a Comic-Con one time, and it was so cool. I was nervous as hell getting a picture. Uh, he could tell, and he was like, oh, man. Like, he, like, was taking my, his time with me. And he uh, passed away, and I was so gutted. By Everyone was heartbroken. Obviously, as the newbie to Power Rangers, uh, Jason David Frank has had much less of an impact on me as a... Uh, fan of superheroes and uh you know people in spandex and fighting robots but uh as a whole uh i see him as a very kind soul a very loving individual and uh the one time i did get to meet him in person which was at that same comic con uh he was a very upstanding guy i told him i wasn't really a fan of power rangers and i didn't really watch any of it but he still took the time to talk to me, sign something, and even like took a quick selfie, which was honestly huge and something I really needed that day. So if somehow you're listening, Jason, uh, you made a fan that day. The man's an absolute classic person. Anyway, we're going to get back to the episode, and uh, um, Doif has stepped away, so I will... T oh, nope, he's back. So actually, yeah, I do want to say this. So immediately upon a fir uh, first viewing, we get like so many th iconic things out of Jason David Frank, out of Tommy Oliver, that just sticks with his character and him at the exact same time, even a, like just upon first viewing. His like the spin kicks that he's known for, but that God bloody amazing 
Then he'll always Hi-ya's. let out. Iconic Hayas. Haya. His, I, his Lex his Lex Lugerisms. Lex well, God wait. damn it. <laughs> Shout out to OSW. Lex Luger. Stop ruining uh stop ruining Jason David Frank for me, Adam. Oh, I'm <laughs> every, sorry. Every time I'm gonna hear Ohio, I'm gonna picture Lex Luger going, Oh <laughs> throw, throw some throw some Lex Luger in there, why not? Yeah. And a new challenger. Yeah. Come on, yeah, and he wants yeah, and he wants. We get. I want to say, like, uh, as we get a shot of Jason J- J- David Frank, of course, we get the first uh, l- l- little tinge of a romance between Kimberly and Jace and uh, and Tommy. Kimberly gets wet for her, for him. I don't. I'm going to put you in in the skull corner. Yeah, you fucking with some wet ass pussy. Bring a bucket and I'm- The skull corner is what I'm officially calling the Power Ranger shame corner. Like I said, she definitely wants to get her skull cornered by Tommy. I call it the skull corner because that's the corner that Skull goes to every time he gets cucked by Kimberly. (laughs) Uh, And that's that's also where he goes to plan his many murders. Yes. No, 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 no. He comes out of the corners thirsting for murder. And uh, we get, I want to say this is when we get a shot of Rita saying um, uh, that, guy, that, that guy. I, uh, the, Tommy will be perfect for to be my Green Ranger. My Green Ranger. And, and then, like, uh, I'm just going to quickly get, get past that shot of Rita because I want to talk about this fight. Um, I think we both want to talk about this fight. <laughs> this is such a great fight, and in my opinion, it lays... I think the backbone for Jason and Tommy's relationship for the rest of the show, how they're always somewhat competing, but at this point in the show, it's like they're an equal level. So like the sixth ranger and Jason, the leader where red is generally the most powerful of the team are at an even standstill. I like to equate this fight between, uh, between Tommy and Jason as the same as like a fight between uh Goku and Vegeta. It it's it's got that <laughs> vibe. Like two people who are on basically the same team. Sure, there isn't as much evil ambigu amb- ambiguity from one side, but they're just so equal that it just works and it just flows relentlessly and you're just so invested on seeing who will best the other i was genuinely so enthralled with this entire like three minute sequence that i didn't even write any notes for it i was just watching just completely in awe with your comparison, though, um, I, I will like uh, say that the Dragon Ball comparison is like really spot on, but I, I'd say it's closer in my opinion because, like, uh, uh, because one isn't just like completely set evil. I'd say it's closer to, uh, at, at least in my eyes, to Goku and Piccolo Junior. Oh, that's actually a much better comparison. It's just a lot less obviously violent. It's yes. just it is really they're just on an equal level and their their rivalry is well rivalry in air quotes is just uh, a huge backbone to their relationship. And then of course Tommy kidnaps that baby in later seasons. That that's not real. You you're <laughs> kidding. Although when I when I did when I did go back, I did have one note to say about this uh, this fight scene and it's every time the the judge uh says Hajime, which uh, obviously is their cue to begin again. Every time the the the, the fucking uh, the judge says Hajime, it just sounds like Voldemort saying Avada Kedavra. <laughs> Also, also, this is the many of many martial arts tournaments. Ernie, why are you so invested in these martial arts stuff? Well, gee, I don't know. Maybe it's not, it's not like Jason runs a karate class there. Uh, I a, don't know if they ever yeah. like in uh in in the Boom Comics run. I think it's Boom Comics. Um, if they ever added backstory for Ernie, but I always thought because he cares so much for the kids that um that 
like maybe he was like extremely bullied when he was a kid. So he opened up the juice bar to for like youths and whatnot that were like not treated the best and whatnot for like all those to be accepting. And like, I, I think he knows Bulk and Skull are like bullied. They're the bullies that also get bullied. Yeah. So I think he gives them so much slack because he knows they're losers. But it's like, so I see him just like constantly uh, signing up for activities that he knows that the kids he always interacts with, mainly the main five, um, are really into. So you'll see like science fairs, school projects, uh, karate tournaments, which since uh, Jason and him, uh, you obviously see them being good friends. I could see him be like, oh, hey, a karate tournament. I, You know, Jason would probably love if we had it at the juice bar. Yeah, this is a really good headcanon for Ernie. It it just like he is one of those characters that isn't a ranger that just you can't help but in like 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 it, it's like he like he he never became a ranger. I don't think he even was involved in the big um, final battle uh, in in no, space. No, but oh, he wasn't. But uh, like I'm just. I just think he deserves more than just like a juice bar named Ernie's in Super Mega Force. I think he does deserve a bit more than that. I think Ernie is really the lifeblood of some of these early early episodes. Then we get uh, a after the uh, a wrap up of the karate tournament tournament where we get uh, a draw between Jason and Tommy, which again, I l love. Um, Very I want to say, I, I want to say we get the beginning of Rita and her evil spell. The, yeah, like, really after Kim get after Kim gets a bit wet for Tommy. And then also after the, uh, the karate tournament, we get a uh, scene in the locker hallway at uh, at at uh, Angel Grove High, where uh, you know Bulk and Skull try to mack on on uh, Kimberly, and Skull tries to get some, and yeah. Tommy cucks him again. <laughs> I, 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 I what I love about this is I like the the gang has dealt with Bulk and Skull before and have gone in fights with them before but it's always been like they've tried to attack him and it's like or attra uh, attack them and they've always just like defended themselves but like then we we just get I almost say Jason David Frank again we get Tommy uh, just just being Tommy and just like punching the air and kicking and, and they're just like yeah, no, thank you. So they run away. Um, I think I have skull. to go do my taxes. Yeah, they run away and Skull goes to the Skull Corner. <laughs> yeah, and then Kimberly introduces herself. Uh, she, her and Tommy make plans to meet up with everyone else at the, at the juice bar later. And then we get the Rita scene. But also, um, uh, I'd like to mention, the... goddamn, rewatching this, Tommy and Kim are the so adorable. Each other. They're so goddamn adorable. A lot of people... Anything. Um, I, I, I do want to comment on this. A lot of people really um, wanted them to end up together since we did get to this point. Again, my personal head canon is Kimberly and Skull, but I do got to say these two have such a cute romantic uh, chemistry, just great chemistry all around. And um, yeah. Although I do like Kat. Yeah, and that's what I was going to talk about. I've seen some of her stuff, and I do like Kat. But she's it's not that like, bad, but she's not Kim, is what I think. It's just biased because I saw Kimberly first. It's always biased because it is Kimberly. But I'm saying, mm. I don't know who Kat is. So, Cat's uh, Kat. the second um, uh, she, Mighty uh, Morphin uh, Ranger. Uh, uh, and uh, one little trivia note I do want to add about this is that this is when we find out his name. Tommy Oliver like th this is when he introduces himself because we don't hear his name um I at least I say we don't hear his name uh during the karate tournament oh yeah he says hi I'm Tommy they Oliver. do introduce him by Tommy not Tommy Oliver so it was just his first name this mm -hmm. is when we get his full name 
and we see he he's just a shy kid it seems like just but like a, a nice kid like he definitely seems like he is bland enough to fit in with the main ones perfectly well, yes, he he's just though. that level of milk toast. Mm -hmm. and, and then we see him uh, walking home from school or going down uh, the, the shortcut scene. down an alleyway. The, the, the Rita scene. Oh yeah. yeah and then yeah. we get the re oh yeah, and then we get the Rita scene uh, with her uh, with this really cool ass uh, skull sculpture uh, with glowing uh, eyes, and. Uh, then we get the test to see if uh, Tommy is worthy enough, and he fights off a gang of putties. We cut, we cut to the test with a now 90s PowerPoint cut. Yeah. <laughs> with like a star wipe, and it looks fucking stupid. Saved by the Bell did that a lot, too. Yeah, you you half expect the saxophone uh, one accustomed commercials to mm -hmm. keep. <laughs> Sorry, there there's one other thing to mention. So as as we cut with the '90s PowerPoint cut, we also see two of Tommy's random friends that never show up again. They just walk away. Another one of Skull's victims. <laughs> they're they Skull's victims for the five parter. <laughs> yeah. He wants vengeance on Tommy because he's too scared of him. Uh, so he's going after his friends and loved ones. That's why we never hear about his parents. So then we get um, Tommy, of course, as uh, you lovingly said, humanoid, uh, child's play and just absolutely bodying every single one of the putties. And... Um, there, and there's one this is there's weird. one part of this fight that I want to talk about. Uh so there I believe it's the second or the third putty. He grabs them, does like a little arm ringer, and then throws him into a bunch of cardboard boxes. Now who would just leave cardboard boxes lying around like that? Oh, don't you talk about my boxes! I like boxes! Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm just saying that's the start of the whole box empty box ring that they started doing. Logistically, if you if you have boxes you need to throw away, you'd break them down first. But yet, they make such good props for a fucking martial arts fight. So, so then Rita picks up uh, t uh, Tommy after being amazed with uh, his uh, skill. Beams him up, Scotty. Beams yeah. him up, and then we get the beginning of the transformation of and Tommy. We get Green Ranger. We we get we get Rita at her crystal bar going ah de do a dembala <laughs> we had cut the footage of Barai from Danger Tommy. yeah it's literally just Barai it's yeah. literally just the sixth ranger from Sentai and then Tommy and, has been brainwashed yeah he's and, and then he gets up and I want to say, uh, as he holds the Green Ranger coin, this is when he turns into the Green Ranger with a puff of green smoke. Now let's let's talk about the shield. I uh, now, wait, but can we, I'll give you a thirty second reprieve while I talk about this shitty cheap set that this morph happens on. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. This this morph, it, first of all, it's another Vegas effect. With just a puff of green smoke, and uh, then this the the scene dressing is some black curtains that are meant to look like a rock wall, two candelabras that are clearly like not even actual candelabras; they're just light up candelabras that you'd find at like a Halloween store, mm -hmm. with, like light bulbs, and then a smoke machine. So Haim Saban, his gen, his uh, his Very infamous genius. uh. His infamous cheapness, this entire scene cost him probably about 40 to 50 bucks. Oh. Now it's time to talk about the shield. Yes. So, so famously, they couldn't afford a rubber shield um, for the Green Ranger suit for the American shots. So they had to use one made out of like belt or a oh. fabric material. And it looks awful. It's terrible. Oh, it's I, I, I believe it's like so infamous to the point where I think there's like a deluxe Green Ranger finger uh, fig, figure. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, <laughs> where it comes with a rubber shield, but it also comes with a fabric shield as well. 
it it just i i love that so much if that's a real detail i gotta look that up when i get the chance but um this stupid stupid shield makes me laugh every single time because it just like beforehand there were some cases where you couldn't make out the sentai footage sometimes compared to the american shots now it's just incredibly obvious oh yeah it is the ultimate tell now back then i didn't think nothing of it i go like cool a shield but now that you look much older now jesus christ yeah, uh, but you know the shield is an L. But let me tell you what a what a big fat W the Ranger suit itself is. Uh, I love it. It's uh, got the beautiful green and white. Con- it's a contrast to all of the other suits, whereas uh, it's it it just feels different. And also the helmet just feels different because uh, it's a dragon instead of a instead of um, a dinosaur. Oh, yeah. uh, dragons are dinosaurs. Oh. These dragons are medieval dinosaurs. Yeah, just take a look at Godzilla. Totally a dinosaur. He's also an Oscar winner. <laughs> but yes, the Green Ranger suit is a fat W, and I love it. So then we get his most iconic laugh ever, the one that started all. Oh my god. Okay. This laugh, I, I hate it. Okay, okay, it's the first time, though, but you'll get used to it. Actually, it's already this, this, done, this, so, yeah. Yeah, the evil stuff is over, so I can, can can confidently say, Jason David Frank, you are a man of many talents. Evil laughter is not one of them. Well, it wasn't supposed to be taking that shoot. It doesn't, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip out again, because it, just because it wasn't meant to be taken seriously, Andreas, it does not mean it's good. Right, right. I, I, we've I, you're you're going to get me wound up again. That's something you don't want. So then Tommy then beams, beams into the command center, since he has a, uh, uh, a power, power coin right. now, and he puts in a uh, disc to corrupt Alpha 5 with a virus. The virus. And then right. he starts playing Crazy Taxi with the controls in the command center to just start uh, <laughs> to, to get rid of Zordon. Being yeah, this my when friend. I was ten, I was struck. I go like, "Can he do that? Just did that? What?" <laughs> my the one thing I caught from this scene that I loved is while <laughs> we'll see if we can pull it up, but while uh, while Tommy is banging at the controls and Zordon is losing himself oh. and losing his connection with this world, is he, <laughs> Tommy? Uh, no, oh. Tommy, no. No. Man, Stop it! Oh, come back! Man, I hate you for pointing that out now. <laughs> no. The best, the best part is Zordon does it again a few parts later, oh. and it's the exact same no. It's so st- Tommy. No. Tommy. No. And uh, it just makes me think of that Vader clip. Make my Goldar grow, and this is a. Uh, this is where I point out. Goldar's sw- huge swinging cod piece. <laughs> it's just because they because they always shoot the growing scenes from like an angle up at the monster while it grows. So it's just staring you right in the face as he grows. Yeah, it's I just there that. swinging at you. Yeah. Just like smack dab right in like the fish eyed lens of the camera. It's so fucked. And Zach, Zach's there too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he talks about how the best way to clean a rad bug is with the Zach's wax. No. That's whack. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just shut up. And I was in that I didn't, did you, you say that like I... Yeah, it just... It's something he said, Malcolm. <laughs> I, I know, but then you have to go and repeat it. And I just... So the girls come in, and Jim is kind of down because she the skull fucking down. From Tommy or from Skull? <laughs> yes, you guys are a bunch of degenerates. Um, <laughs> says the guy who just said that Kimberly fucked Skull and Tommy in the same day. I didn't. I don't. I didn't say that. I didn't I didn't say say that. that. You did. Um, and my favorite part about the Rad Bug scene is just they're like, "All right, we're coming down. Hang on." And then we get the whoa oh. in the extreme nineties close up, and we get the amazing editing. Extreme close up. Whoa! Whoa! 
I don't know exactly like how it zooms in like that and it really makes me think what like the background of the command center is supposed to be like is it supposed to be lights or is it supposed to be like stars or something in the background because it's like how did the rad bug like it anyway so so then they see that zordon is not there in his fishbowl so he must have zordon. escaped from the uh, unfortunately uh alpha it, they discover that he tried to download uh <laughs> Brazilian fart porn again. So he, he tried to download porn.exe. <laughs> so he shut down and um and then they discover that like the records are scrambled or whatever and they can't figure out what happened. And then they see that Goldar on uh, the viewing globe is uh attacking downtown or the sorry, the abandoned buildings district. Oh no, they called it the warehouse, the business district. Yeah, I think the, it was the warehouse district. It wasn't yeah, the abandoned empty yet. warehouse it district. Was, it's not abandoned yet. And it's not so abandoned. that means that means Goldar is killing dozens of people right now. Yeah, that means he's actually killing people. It's not abandoned yet. And and, and then we get the morphin sequence, oh, and then before... we get I want to say a quick fight with the putties. Sorry, I gotta cut you off for a second. When they get the morphin sequence, finally get Austin St. John's iconic emotion. Has emotion by saying it's he morphing. Finally has put emotion. emotion. No, the other episodes he didn't put much emphasis. Now he finally put some emphasis. Like I, I'm pretty sure that like he like even if it was just like a little in the early days, but this I, is I, the most emotion he's put in thus far. Yeah, I, like, I, it's, it's I do want to of... say this is like the first time where like we get like the emotion with like him facing the camera. Yep, this is where it starts with like showing that emotion, the iconic. It's more finally. Time. So then we get um, the, uh, the the quick fight with the putties, and then we get the Megazord sequence, <laughs> and and then we get just uh, the first taste of how amazing the Green Ranger is by him just completely scaling the Megazord, jumping on top of jump it, nonetheless, which is just with one jump and just being like. Uh, Hi, uh, I'm going to be replacing you guys. Uh, corporate hired me. And so he just yeah. eats the rest of the Rangers he, out of the Megazord. He, he, opens, the he, he, he opens the door to, to the cockpit and is like, Hello, have I, am, I'm here to talk to you about your Megazord's extended warranty. <laughs> yeah, I'm here to fuck you up and you can't do anything about it. And yeah, um, then he eats them all out. And so this is when we get the first fight with uh, the Green Ranger and uh, the other Rangers I, and the other Rangers. Yeah. And and if I, I do want to say this is this fight, but we get the uh, the Green Ranger green energy ball that he only fires once in the series and never fires again. Hadouken. The one the one time Green Ranger Hadouken. Well, he he doesn't he he didn't have a uh, Rita's powers anymore, so he can't summon that stuff, like his eye beams in the other episode. I I don't think he had eye beams in. No, the... his eyes just his eyes just flashed. I bring it up in part two. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah, no, yeah, that that the that part, right? I I thought he had like eye beams that shot out of his helmet because I know in the movie. Uh, like one of the Rangers had like flashlight eyes, and I was never able to unsee that as a child. <laughs> Rocky, are you sure? It was... No, 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 no. Rocky had X-ray vision. I'm pretty sure it was like. Oh no, that was Aisha. Never mind. Yeah, yeah Aisha. Um, but then they uh go back to the command center after getting their asses completely handed to them, uh, and Alpha's throwing it back. Booty booty. Booty booty, booty booty. I spy with my little eye. Booty! And it seems like Alpha is uh, uh, starting to uh, uh, come together a bit and then, of course, shuts down again. Because he mm -hmm. got that 1993 porn. That's where, he, that's where Alpha throws ass for the Rangers. That's what he gets for being, uh, like, for. for bleh, words. For being run on Windows Vista. You no, know, yeah, Vista is, a, is the more... No, actually, it's the more broken version of Vista. It's Windows Longhorn. Right. 
And uh, so then we, uh, at the command center, we get uh, just a quick, like, debriefing of, uh, what the hell is going on, guys? But I do firmly believe that this is only a taste of what's yet to come. You jump into it immediately. Part two, Jason's battle. Yep, Jason. Uh, Jason's battle, part two, which was written by the man, the myth, the legend himself, M. Bison, Tom Weiner. Jason Frank in the credits. Yeah, this is the first time he's in the credits, and it's awesome. We we slowly get the development of that because I believe just in this credit we just see like uh him like doing his spin kicks but no like uh image of him in the ranger suit. Yeah, not yet. What in the I think that shows up in like part four or five. Yeah. Um I, I think once like uh the Dragon Zord pops up as well. Um but we get uh Jason being absolutely pissed in the first couple minutes of this episode uh mm-hmm. for at the Green Ranger. Yeah, so we open at the command center. And uh, the Rangers are still dealing with the uh, with the aftermath of everything that happened in part one. Uh, Jason is p- is pacing around and is obviously pissed off about this Green Ranger dude. Yeah, I just I love how he says it. So I had to put that there. Uh, we also have Billy and uh, Trini helping Billy with this crazy space welding machine. Uh, while he tries to work on getting Alpha 5 back together. Uh, Alpha 5 does come back to life, and uh, Alpha 5 is alive. Alpha 5 is alive! (laughs) It's scary how good that was, though. But And and then, uh, Uh, anyway... Alpha 5 gets up, and the first thing he says is, Dude! Dude it! Uh Uh-oh, cringy Alpha's back. It, it's it's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, they're they're all mulling over the whole situation with the, whoever this green guy is, uh, uh, and I'm gonna give them a pass at this point because they have no clue who it is. Uh, yeah. Then we cut to Rita's palace, and Rita is very excited about how about Tommy's progress and wants to give him uh, one of the greatest gifts, the Sword of Darkness, which will make. His, her control over him permanent as long as the sword is still intact. Everybody got that? She she has Finster uh, get to work on the sword of darkness. We cut back to Tommy and we this is the first uh this is the first shot of uh uh his iconic green eyes. Uh so Rita basically tells him uh you're going to stay on earth. Make sure no one knows you're the green ranger, you fucking dingus. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And wait for me to and wait for me to call you again. So uh, conveniently, as soon as Rita's influence goes away and all the wind stops blowing, who turns the corner? Da 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 da. Nah, nah, nah. It's a Vulcan skull. Boom 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 boom. boom. They just, they just don't learn. Just don't learn. Yeah, Vulcan, Vulcan skulls show up, and they want to get revenge on Tommy. For showing him up in front of showing them up in front of Kimberly, so they walk up and they're just like, "Hey, Dweebo, let me. Uh, we're gonna teach you that lesson now." Yeah, just staring at them. Uh, they think he's giving them the strong and silent treatment, and uh, then Tommy just shows them up with a couple of uh, quick moves, and uh, he throws them both perfectly into a dumpster. <laughs> hey, uh, no, he doesn't even out. throw him; he just looks at him into a dumpster. Hey, just those <laughs> lightning guys. Oh. oh, I forgot about that. I'm sorry. Yeah, he oh, just fires lightning. green lightning, and then they just jump into the dumpster themselves. <laughs> and then and we fro- we we pause it at the perfect time where their legs were just stay- sticking straight up again. <laughs> Do remember seeing in a uh, panel that uh, Jason and Polly said that. Um, I believe it was during this episode where they do a lot of their same stunts or, or their own stunts uh, during uh, the filming of the show because uh, it was hard for them to find a stunt guy for bulk. So so the main rule they would go for was make sure Jason landed on top. Yeah. Usually. 
And yeah. I believe this episode is one of those cases where, unfortunately, Jason did not land on top of Polly. Polly landed on Jason. Oh. And, and we get we get the situation reminds me of uh, the bit where uh, where Cactus Jack fell on top of Chainsaw Charlie in that other dumpster match. Yeah, and that was scary. Uh, but this is skull. But uh, bulk falling on top of skull in the uh, in in the in the in the dumpster uh, behind the scenes. That's all of Skull's come up as he ever gets for his mass murdering. <laughs> yeah, very true. Very very. <laughs> Which is. Pretty funny. Uh, then we cut to uh, Angel Grove High, and Kimberly sees Tommy. Uh, um, his eyes flash again before Kimberly comes up to Tommy. Become Kimberly comes up to Tommy, and this is where I put in the note. Uh, uh, Tommy, you need visine. <laughs> Man, you got some weird eye shit going on. You need some fucking yeah. You need some fucking eye drops. Tommy just like nags her. He treats like trash. Well, excuse me for living. But this whole scene has a lot I want to talk about, and most of it has to do with with Tommy's outfit. Oh yeah. Uh, it's just green fishnet shirt with a green undershirt and green baggy camo pants. So I now officially dub the Tom Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I'm sorry. It just worked. <laughs> anyway, it works in a better way too because in part three he becomes Spider-Man at a point. I'll talk about that later. All right. <laughs> uh, so now, uh, then we get the Rita family field trip, where <laughs> Rita takes all of his all of her cronies down and into a uh, down to uh. Tommy's test to down to the beach, yes, and Tommy's there as well. And this is Tommy's test to see if he can acquire the Sword of Darkness. So we get a huge, big putty fight. Tommy versus, I think it's like 12 putties. And he fucking decimates them. There's a couple of cool, fun spots in the, in this fight that I'd like to talk about. Uh, the first thing is, I believe it's the second or third putty he takes care of, kicks them back, and then another putty jumps off of the guy's shoulders and does a fucking common Rider rider kick. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. It looked awesome. It looked amazing, and it didn't phase Tommy at all. Uh, there's a lot more fighting, a lot more hullabaloo, and Rita basically says, uh, finish them, and... Tommy breaks out his finisher, which he jumps at the last putty, and he hits him with a Jason David Frankensteiner. Oh, the Irish whip. Oh, the Frankensteiner! Yeah, that's a good move, the Jason Frankensteiner. God damn it. You know what? If he ever were to get into it, well, if he was still alive, and if he were to ever get into wrestling, that should have been his finisher. It did go to you. It MMA. Should, it, it, he was in MMA. I'm, I'm talking about wrestling. Oh, okay. I'm not talking about MMA. Well, there was that but, whole bit of him fighting him punk in a wrestling match. It never happened. No, not wrestling. He wanted to beat the shit out oh, of him in person. Crazy. Like he, he, he wanted to shoot fight. Oh yeah, Jason David Frank. Jesus. Jason David Frank did go into MMA. Here is Jason Felix. He oh did. He had God. a pretty good career as well. It's impressive. Well done, JDF. You are a man of many talents. Uh, and obviously, uh, Tommy wins, and he acquires the Sword of Darkness, which I will admit has a fucking sick design. It looks like kind of like a uh, like a kopesh ish design. It's got the curved blade and the f like weird, unique handle with the red ruby in it. It's it's a very cool sword. Can we get. Uh, Zach and Kimberly at the Radbug at Billy's house with Billy not there, and they're talking about how weird how weird Tommy was for negging on Kim earlier, and this is where I start to say, for fuck's sakes, the Green Ranger is Tommy. God damn it! Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get more into I'll get more I'll get more into why I get pissed off about this whole plot point in part three. Uh, it just uh, this is where it starts annoying me. Uh, 
and they're waiting for Jason. And Jason's back at the school looking for Tommy. She he asks a couple of random people if they've seen Tommy. They haven't seen him, so he turns the corner, and who's that at the stairs? It's Tommy. <laughs> the most craziest eyes ever. It's like he looks like he's about to stab him. Are you trying to get crazy with this scene? Don't you know I'm loco? He looks like he's been doing some crazy Rita drugs. Yeah. And uh, Jason's basically like, hey, man, uh, I know I said we were going to work out, but uh, no, I can't do it. <laughs> Why is Austin talking like that? I mean, Jason. Uh, I don't, I don't know. He's talking like this. I don't know. <laughs> That I, green I just dude. Kind of, <laughs> it's because of that Green Ranger dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I forgot. I forgot there was a there was a scene earlier where uh, where Jason is basically punching the fuck out of a bo- uh, out of a uh, fucking power bag that uh that Zach is holding, and Zach's like, "Why the fuck are you so? Why are you tweaking, bro?" And, and Jason's just like, "I really hate this Green Ranger dude because he wears he wears a costume like us, but he's evil." Oh it's like, God! And it's like, for fuck's sake, Jason! <laughs> like, you're gonna fucking fix him. Calm down. Yeah. Uh, but back to the scene at hand. Uh, Tommy, uh, basically, he's like, "Oh yeah, no, I sure." I totally understand, which is just the the line delivery is so uh, that guy from Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. I'm so sorry, Jason. It just sounds like that. Garbage day guy? Yeah, garbage day guy. I understand. Garbage day! It just sounds like that. Uh, this is the part where I say that Tom, the Tom, that Tommy is Spider-Man because uh, Jason turns around and he shoots a beam out of his wrist that transports him to Bobbity's spaceship from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> because it looks pretty much exactly like the inside of Bobbity's spaceship, but it's obviously Rita's palace. Uh, the bars are electrified. Uh, and Jason's communicator, like all of the communicators right now, are not working. So... Uh, yeah, and from behind him, he hears a voice, and he hears, "Oh, you that communicator won't work here." And he turns around, and I can't do a Goldar voice. I'm sorry. Oh, My throat is a bit. Communicator won't work here. Yeah, so he turns around, and Goldar has taken uh, Jason's morpher from his belt. <laughs> I think we finally yeah. reached a uh, permanent peak, Goldar, which is perfect. Uh, then yeah. Uh, we get like an interspersed scene pr- transition between both uh, Jason and Goldar's standoff, and Kimberly and Zach are re- arriving at a uh, command center. Billy and Trini are there, still trying to help with the uh, mess that is the computers that look like they're at my work, like they're from the 70s. Uh, it's just a mess of wires and circuit boards, and they're trying to obviously get Zordon back in the uh, in the tube. Uh, but of course, uh, Rita has other plans, and the Green Ranger is out causing havoc. So the four other Rangers have to head out and, you know, suppress him a little bit and try and, you know, fight him off with the putties. Uh, so we get the morphing sequence with the four of them, and they go off to uh, they go off to fight to- uh, Tommy and uh, Tommy and the and the knockers. I don't know. I, I just thought Tommy knockers. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, then we get uh, my ultimate six word critique about these two fight scenes Jason versus Goldar mid say what really? Rangers versus Tommy good that's good yeah no the Jason versus Goldar I did not enjoy it was just you know what I equated to it's how I feel about Brett versus Owen Hart Sur- SummerSlam like- 94 the uh. cage match it's just a lot of slow walking, oh, and a lot of, you know, a, a lot of trying to find a way to escape the cage and a lot of trying to find a way to get his morpher back yeah. with uh, a lot of nothing happening. Oh, yeah, but the real the, the, the real reason I hate this fight comes up in part three because uh, <laughs> this goes on through the cliffhanger. Uh, Rangers versus Tommy is a good fight. It's a lot of fun martial arts, as per usual. 
and it eventually ends with uh Tommy uh basically uh uh and this is the the uh redundant Kimberly part that I have written in my notes cuz uh Kimberly in the first part when he uh when when she jumped into her zord said uh all right let's keep it together and when she jumps into her megazord in this episode it's all right let's keep it together <laughs> again again it's just like no no any nothing this is the first time in my exper- expertise that the megazord fights something uh human sized then we get the sort of wrap up uh Jason versus Goldar is still happening he's flaunting his uh he's flaunting Jason's morpher at him drops it and then we get some more talk at the uh, command center and a bit more of the fight uh Goldar knocks Jason down because Jason just decides to oh he dropped my morpher i go for it and he just kicks him down i love your jason voice i'm, I'm sorry I don't know why it just makes me think of Big Boss Man. Oh, the man! He gets go tries to go for his morpher. Goldar just kicks him down to the ground, and then Goldar has a sword to him, and this is where the cliffhanger happens. So, da 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 da, and then we move swiftly on into Green with Evil Part Three: The Rescue, which begins right where we left off with more of this cat and mouse bullshit with uh, <laughs> Gold- with Goldar and Jason. Uh, Goldar takes a swing with his sword and Jason gets out of the way and we get a POV shot from uh, Goldar's eyes looking around the arena and I will give them some credit. The fog at this moment and I'll admit it, the fog looks really thick here so I see what they're trying to do with this part of the fight but We'll continue to get there when we get there uh, because we cut away from the fight and we get a bit of uh, Rita talking about bringing in one of her most trusted allies, Scorpina. I gotta say, hey. she's my second crush after Kim because as a kid, I go like, I think my balls dropped again. <laughs> uh, damn, it's what I'm saying. So, Scorpina. God damn. They do were so, so dirty in this show, though, I, w- I will say, compared to this uh, Zhu Ranger. Yeah, she because in Zhu Ranger, she's Goldar's wife. Yeah. She's got all of this power. She's a hot Asian lady. Eh. I, I don't even think that they will know specifically with the Goldar thing, because I just thought that was such like a nice touch, an interesting touch, but they just... they. they they don't even bring it up they yeah it up it's, I, I don't like it it's another thing where they really should have just put that in the show yeah because they're uh, already buried in the show I mean like the, the clips they show here they're trying to show not yeah, show they it try to avoid showing it but they show it Yeah, uh, we'll get there uh, so yes uh, Scorpina arrives in her pulsing bulb with scorpions <laughs> crawling around it and she's in a she, she's she's in a mushroom forest at this point, and then we get the reverse the footage bull they're rolling up a hill and also up some stairs. <laughs> I don't know why, but whatever. Yeah, just because it's cool. This makes no sense, out. and yet it's working. Yeah. yeah. And then she breaks out of the boulder, and we get her design. Her it's a shot of her from Zhu Ranger, but you know it's iconic. The gold armor, the scorpion motif. And, uh, yes, she's hot. Damn! We cut back to the command center, and the constant battle of still trying to, uh, get Zordon on the, on, on, in the tube is still happening. There isn't enough power to, uh, like, connect to him, so... It's, Will the uh, fish run out of oxygen before it gets back in his bowl? And then we cut back to the, the Goldar and Jason fight, and this is the part of the Goldar and Jason fight that I hate. Because Goldar is just blindly stabbing around in the fog, trying to find Jason. The only problem is, the, the fog is much thinner now, so he stands directly above Jason. And he's going to bring the sword down right on his head, Jason dodges out of the way, and 
Goldar just lifts the sword as if he missed him and then starts walking away. How can you not see him? Maybe it's, Jason uh, is so a... white that he looks like smoke. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> but he's wearing at... red. I'm just going to say, we're looking at the camera's point of view of Goldar looking down, so I don't know. We're looking at smoke cam, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're in the smoke cam. This is like a Jason POV shot. Yeah. And it looks crystal clear when he looks up. Yet, yeah, it's still, there's still fog. It's just like, I don't know. I'm trying to think yeah, of something. I don't care if he's white enough to look at the same color as the fog. He's wearing bright red. Like, for fuck's sake, Goldar, are you blind, Jesus? Maybe blind. You see, most he's philosophers truly know this, but red oh. is the perfect camouflage for smoke. Uh, Goldar has red eyes, so he can't see the red on Jason. All he sees is red, so like a dinosaur, you can't see him until he moves, I guess. I don't know. So, he, so his, his eyes are like cane lights? <laughs> Yeah, it's like Scotsman with plaid. He sees everything red, so of course he didn't see Jason. Jesus. Uh, that's my theory. <laughs> see, if you oh, were completely plaid, uh, Scottish people can't see you. <laughs> so it's like T-Rex rules. <laughs> Jason, when Goldar drops his guard and doesn't see him, uh, gives him a very big kick, at, like gets up out of the way, kicks him. Then there's a bit more gabbing. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Goldar talks about how I've never been killed, but I've never a human will never defeat Goldar. And then Austin St. John says, oh, yeah, we'll see about that. I love that voice. You gotta keep on doing it. <laughs> he just sounds like Kevin Owens when he says that. Oh, yeah, we'll see about that. It oh, just, man. Look, it just, and then immediately goes to take a kick to Goldar, immediately falls down on the ground again. <laughs> so once again, hey, oh. Goldar's mercy. Then we cut. Then we cut. Then we cut back to the youth center, and the juice bar. Uh, Kimberly is trying to find out if Ernie knows anything about where Jason is. Ernie obviously has seen nothing. <laughs> then Bulk and Skull show up. Bulk and Skull show up and say, "Can't to tell Kimberly? Oh yeah, we'll help you look for Jason Schmason." <laughs> I love these and I'm guys. like, "What a what a great nickname, yeah. Jason Schmason." <laughs> <laughs> And Kimberly's like, thanks, but no thanks. And Skull says, oh, but we'll do it for cheap. And Ernie says, what is cheap for you? And then Skull says, well, we only, we will take, we'll accept payment in kisses. And Kimberly looks coyly over to Skull and says, all right, Skull, you're on. I'll get, p close your eyes and puck your lips. Ernie's oh, like, what the fuck are you doing? Ernie says, what the fuck are you doing, Kimberly? Kimberly winks, and then Skull, seeing that Kimberly has winked at Ernie, just looks at him and sneers. <laughs> then, obviously, Skull closes his eyes, puckers up, moves forward. Kimberly gets out of the way, and uh, er Skull kisses his true lover, Bulk. <laughs> I, says, I, I, I always get, like, a Jane Silent Paul Bob vibe with those two, so it's accurate. Once again, proving that... Uh, Balkan Skull is the true OTP of this of this television show. Yeah. Uh, then uh, Kimberly goes to leave and bumps into Tommy. Tommy, who is not looking like Tom Hardy, now is just wearing a green wife beater and black like martial arts pants and a necklace. So he's he's wearing even less. He's also got like a black a, a green bag. Uh, <laughs> this is another Tommy negging Kimberly scene. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot less. It's a lot less scathing than the first one, but it's still uh, still pretty scathing. <laughs> and he looks even more like a dick. He looks, he's got a, this is going to sound offensive and I'm sorry, but with the hair slicked back and with uh, the big uh, protruding ears, he reminds me of Nick Cage. 80s, 80s Cage. Literally just Nick Cage from Face Off, but 20 years younger. Wait, no, he yeah. looks like uh, Cameron Poe from Con Air. That's the exact same haircut. Is Cameron Poe a pro? That's, that's it. We're, that's we're, we're that's right, right down to the shirt. They now are convinced that something's up with Tommy, uh, it, but they don't immediately say the obvious, which is that he's the fucking Green Ranger. Well, to be fair, uh, though, they just met the guy. But they don't know how. He no, is. I'll get. I'll look. I'm gonna get to the point in a bit here. But yeah. <laughs> so they go and follow Tommy outside, and uh, we get a we get a shot of Rita uh, looking uh, for his for her Green Ranger, and then also looking for anything that's going wrong with her plan. 
She's looking at her telescope, zoom in, enhance the image, enhance the image, enhance the image. They're at the park, enhance the image further. There's Kimberly and Zach. They're going to ruin my plans. I better send some putties down. <laughs> and then we get uh, the putty fight. Uh, obviously, Tommy is still walking away, looking all suspicious at this point. And to make him even more suspicious, down comes some putties. <laughs> and the putties all get up on the table and they pose like they're a dance squad uh, auditioning for America's Got Talent. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a that's a album cover for the best hip hop album. But they look so sexy while they do it. Put streets back. <laughs> oh All right. Yeah. Uh, and then we get the the putty fight where Kimberly and Zach are sped up for no reason at certain parts of this scene. Uh, we get Zach's hip hop keto. Uh, at first it's in normal speed and then we get also Kimberly's gymnastics and a bit of a uh, leg choking and scissors. Uh, and then <laughs> at, I believe this is the point where, <laughs> oh yeah, they just randomly cut to Tommy and then Zach jumps up on the table and this is where Zach's hip hop keto gets sped up to 200% for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> It just looks weird, and then they cut to Kimberly, and they speed her up for a little bit, too, just to, I guess, make it look cool? Yeah, 90s special effects is not something that is perfect. Uh, Tommy shows his green eyes again, and then he gets teleported to uh, to Bobbity's spaceship, as I lovingly Bobby. called it. Goldar, still in this arena, is about to finish Jason. But then Tommy shows up and cucks him. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, Tommy shows up and cucks Goldar by saying, oh, Rito wants me to kill the Red Ranger. And oh, yeah. And then as as, as uh, after Tommy says this, Goldar just goes, ah, and then teleports away with a big fire transition. <laughs> then we get the first red, well, technically the second red versus green fight. And technically, technically, uh, and I uh, so eloquently called this the Red Green Show. Oh, oh man! <laughs> you know, anything could be, you're anything able could to. Be. A a any monster can be defeated with just a little bit of duct tape. <laughs> I was gonna say anything could be fixed with duct tape, except for Jason David Frank and Austin St. John's relationship. <laughs> no, no, he's got a point. <laughs> yeah, but that comes later. <laughs> hey, -o. hey -o. Uh, But yes, uh, there's a fight. Uh, it's pretty, you know, normal stuff. Uh, we get an occasional cut back to the command center where uh, Kimberly and uh, Zach are talking about what happened with Tommy and how he's incredibly sus looking. But they also don't say anything about him being the Green Ranger because, you know, that's not obvious, I guess. We get more fighting between Tommy and uh, Tommy and Jason, which is very fun. And they both are really good martial artists. So their choreography is pretty sick. Jason lands on his morpher during this fight. And goes to grab it, but then Tommy just steps on his wrist and is like, no, you don't. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. And the Rita, and then we, we cut to a scene with Rita and her children talking. And uh, this is the scene where uh, Goldar is very obviously staring and macking at, Zord at uh, Scorpina, but they just cut Scorpina out of the frame. Hand, oh, right. yeah. He's just spiking Scorpina, and you just can't see it. Then they just cut to him talking from a front view, which is, you know, the same front view they always use. But it's fine. Oh, yeah. And then this is the point where I bring up Babu's weird voice change. Please do me a favor and keep your stinger away from me. I think this is the only time that it sound that he sounds like this as well, so it's just it's okay. Yeah, there's a lot of weird voice inconsistencies in this five-parter. Uh, there's this, and then there's something else that I'll bring up later in part five. I I don't like it. It's just not as good as the other Babu voice. I don't know if it's the same guy. It just is so weird. And also, for some reason, Babu's wearing a monocle in this scene. 
<laughs> oh yeah, no, oh, yeah. he he has been wearing a monocle every now and then. I guess fair enough, but I just never noticed it until now. So we're back at at command center. Billy is finally, uh, I think, getting to the point where he's finally trying to uh, laser in on Jason's location because the communicators are almost uh, prepped and ready to go. Uh, so then we cut back to Bobbity Spaceship. I'm sorry, I'm calling it this. Bobbity Spaceship. <laughs> Uh, Tommy left the sword of darkness and is about to kill Jason. <laughs> and I'm like, please do it. <laughs> Jason's just got <laughs> Jason take over and become the Red Ranger that you were destined to be, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my and Jason, in order to, you know, try and stop Tommy from stabbing him, lifts his hands up and is just like, Don't do it. You better not do it. My god, why does he sound like Mark Wahlberg? It's like, hey, Tommy, how's your mother? Say hi to your mother for me. Hey, dog. How you doing, Green Ranger? That's wrong, man. Yeah, hey, dog. How you doing? Hey, hey, dog. God, it's like, it's like Mark Wahlberg and Enzo Amore had a diseased baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, guys, it's wolfing time, guys. Let's do it. Hey, how do you Let's this out before you guys kill me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. So he lifts the sword and goes to stab down, and literally the second he stabs down is the point where fucking Jason morphs away, and Tommy's all confused and pissed off. And this is the point where I write into my notes, Tommy almost went the way of Skull there. Yes. <laughs> he almost committed the irreversible act of his first kill, which would have honestly made for a really cool twist in the series. Well, if you want to go that way, there is uh, Lord Dracon. Follow me and ponder the question. What if so much potential squandered for so long to set things right? We will invade their worlds. They could have been gods. Uh, maybe Draken, and I Draken. was going to actually bring that up as well, um, because there we'll we'll get to it after we finish the five parter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, obviously Tommy has a uh, fucked up, and Goldor is like, "Oh, you fucked up, you fucking idiot." <laughs> <laughs> He was very upset with you, and Jace and Tommy's just like, please give me another chance, daddy. And then Goldar's just like, I'm so sorry, Jason David Frank. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tommy oh. and then Gold. I'm just and watching Goldar's this like, podcast slowly implode in silence. <laughs> This is funny, dude. I don't yeah, keep... It is. It is. I'm doing it for the me for the loss. Yeah. Goldar is like, okay, maybe you'll get a second chance, but for now, you're going to stay there in this cage until you're needed. So, uh, I guess just train. And then, then we cut back to Tommy doing the exposition dump on everything that has happened thus far with Tommy and this Green Ranger dude, and. Uh, I'm sorry. It's, that's, I'm, it's what I'm going to call it. Keep saying it when it's in in in, in affirmation with Jason. Yeah. Uh, and this is where I put my notes. God, Jesus, fuck! It's Tommy. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's kind of obvious, it's but like, uh, it's yeah. it's incredibly obvious. But the kids are too fucking stupid. Yeah, it's like who has some <laughs> like good there's literally been, been like an infant. You you met him at the karate tournament. And he was a very nice guy, very honorable. And then literally a day later, he's suddenly a dick. Yeah. You've literally had this happen to you before, Kimberly and Billy. <laughs> yes, they have. They have. Like, this isn't the first time. Being we turned into punks is completely different than being turned evil. Well, it's a different personality. Is, is, um, it's still a different personality. <laughs> So yeah, this 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 trauma dump, this, this exp exposition dump, is basically it fuels my rage for a bit. But then we get the viewing globe, and uh, 
we see Scorpina, and Alpha brings up that Scorp she he hasn't seen Scorpina for ten thousand years. And all I have to say is, damn girl, you look really good for being ten thousand years old. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> Something in that tea. Something in the tea. And we get the morphing sequence. Everyone morphs. Uh, a bit more emotion from Jason here. They all teleport to the skyscraper district. Yeah. <laughs> and they do they do the pose. Scorpina's there. And this fight scene is honestly pretty cool, except for there is one point, and I really, really want you to find this and put this in the video, because there's a point where Scorpina speaks English. So, Putty Patrol, attack! It's incredibly odd because it's obviously the Sentai footage. It's a Japanese lady. And it looks uncannily similar to the same person who plays Scorpina. So my thoughts on how they did this are either they found someone that looks so eerily similar to the person that played Scorpina that it just worked. Well, it is the or... Sentai footage. Well, what are you saying? And not not for no not for this bit. They there's a bit where after Scorpina uh, blows them up the first time, she throws draws her sword, points it forward, and says, "You go get those Power Rangers now." But it's fucking her her lips are speaking English. Really? It's not okay. the same person. Seriously, it's at just like just before fourteen minutes into the episode. After she blows them up with the sword, literally go back and put it in the video because I swear to God, this flip, this I flipped out when I saw this after rewatching it. Yeah! So, Putty Patrol, attack! Here I come! Ah! Ah! <laughs> huh? Oh, I was like, like, yeah, because I'm looking at it right now. It's like I think it's just like a backdrop in some woman. It's literally just a cheap backdrop, and it's either. A different Asian. <laughs> I'm sorry, lady? Saban, but it's, it's either it's either a different Asian lady or it's a different white lady that they painted to look eerily similar to Scorpina. I couldn't tell it apart, but yeah, I, I'm looking at it now. It's like Jesus. Okay. Yeah, no, it's so it's so fucking weird, and it just like I yeah, brain it it broke my brain. So we get a more of a putty fight, and uh, Scorpina and the putties fight the Power Rangers. We get a couple shots of Rita's castle, and uh, this is another one of my favorite lines in the five-parter, because they're just talking about how Scorpina's doing. Goldar wants to be sent down there, and she, it, Babu thinks, I think that's a good idea. Goldar thinks that's all, I also think that's a good idea. And then Babu says, I think I don't know what I think, your evilness! No! Squat with the best lines in the history. We randomly cut back after the, like, fight intermission, and it's Rita getting her makeup done while Squat holds up a mirror and uh, Babu is fanning her. And this is the scene where Squat says, I think I don't know what I'm thinking. Because Rita was just like, am I more beautiful than Scorpina? And Babu says, I think so. And then Squat says, I think I don't know what I think, your evilness. Which is hilarious. Uh, then, uh, obviously, Scorpina is being is defeated. So she comes back. And it's like, oh, I, I don't know what we should do. If I if anyone else was out there, I would have absolutely destroyed the Rangers. And then they did try to figure out who they're going to send. Are they going to send Goldar? Are they going to send Scorpina? Are they going to send the Green Ranger? Uh, so they eventually end up deciding on Goldar. And while they send Goldar, we cut to a shot in Bobbity Spaceship where, uh, where uh, Tommy is training with the Dark Sword, and this is where I put in my notes that uh, Jason David Frank is Lex Luger. <laughs> yeah, damn it. <laughs> because it's just a, it's just a lot of grunts and a lot of you know because it's the first time where it's like just a solo martial arts scene with no noise pollution. So this is the first time I really noticed all of his grunts. Yeah, because he always says the hi -ya, hi -ya, hi -ya, hi -ya. Yeah, uh, uh, Tommy is just like, hey, uh, I feel like I've done enough to uh, get back out my Empress, so please give me another chance. And then Rita says, you'll get your other chance in the next part. 
Uh, then we cut back. Then we cut back to the command center, and they're still struggling about this whole Green Ranger dilemma. Obviously, because it's, it can't be Tommy. It's impossible that it's Tommy. This is, you know, what I just realized. What this reminds me of. This reminds me of the one feud with Rey Mysterio, Kane, and the Undertaker in 2010, where they found the Undertaker in a vegetative state, and oh, Kane yeah. went. Or, Kane oh. went around looking for who could have possibly hurt his oh, brother. Kane. And then it was, and then it was Kane. Yeah, and it's like or, I can suspend my disbelief. I can suspend my disbelief a little bit when it comes to storytelling like that, but it's so fucking obvious, which is why this pissed me off. I think uh, <laughs> we get a, a bit more of a lock in on Zordon. Uh, Zordon's trying to speak to them about who did this, who Tommy is. Uh, and all of this, but unfortunately, the power fizzes out, and uh, Rita makes for the second time in this five parter makes her Goldar grow, and we once again get a shot of his big swinging cod piece. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it's just there, staring at you menacingly. Yeah. Just very I mean, menacingly. And now that Goldar is big, uh, this is the scene where Goldar starts tearing up the skyscraper district and literally killing hundreds of people. Innocent people. <laughs> literally killing hundreds of innocent people. And uh, this is where the cliffhanger happens. People, because people murdered. it's like it's like Goldar is killing people. What are we going to do? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> And um, that was that was the end of part three. There was a lot to talk about in that two parter, and yeah, and then those two parts of the five parter, and uh, hopefully the last two parts uh, clear up some of my issues. I hope so. So the next part is Green was evil. Part four, ecl eclipsing Megazord. So we start out with the the gang looking at the viewing globe where Goldar is just fucking things up downtown, killing people left and right. And they're, they said they're going to morph, but then the energy, the electricity bill runs out. They forgot to pay your electricity bill, Zordon. They forgot to pay the morphing grid bill. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. No, wait, no, they, they, no the, the morphing grid bill would have been paid, but because Goldar, or because Zordon went to, what was, uh, lost his dimensional connection, they also lost his credit card information. <laughs> so is the energy down? Alpha says, uh, they can't get it back up. Uh, Congratulations, guys, you're screwed. The city is screwed. There's no protectors. So uh, we cut back to uh, Goldar again going on on a rampage killing spree. And then we cut back to the moon base. He's just saying, like, oh, we got to do an eclipse. Because that's uh, apparently the Megazord is operational only, non operational in eclipses. Something that well, because it's, be it's because it's because the Megazord is solar powered. Yeah. Which I just learned. I go like, damn, I completely forgot about that. And Fister goes like, yeah, Zord Zordon really, Zordon really believed in green energy. Oh, he did, definitely did. Uh, so Fincher asks like, so instead of a, one of my monsters, you're gonna go with the Green Ranger, right, man? And Rita just yells at me, yes, you fool. What do you think we've been doing all this time? And she also sends Scorpina, which is where I put in my notes. Stay. <laughs> We cut back to uh, Babu Mount, whatever you called it, Alice. We're Bobbity here. Spaceship. Bobbity Station, where uh, <laughs> Tommy's just practicing, and then he just says, uh, it's time for you to do something, your useless ass. <laughs> he sends him down there. Uh, yeah. We cut back to the command station, command center. They still have no lights, and they're trying to figure it out. Billy goes like, uh, what if I do some Doctor Who wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff here? This is where to... Billy goes big brain and literally just resolves their power crisis. Yeah. And reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. So <laughs> when he's doing this, uh, Alpha going, ay, 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 and Zach's going, like, calm down, dude. Just calm down. Let him cook. You know, so Zach, yeah, literally, Alpha <laughs> goes, ay, 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 and then Zach just goes, hold up. Let hold him cook. Hold up. <laughs> Wait a minute. So Billy being a magnificent genius gets the power back up. And they go and morph, and I think this is the first time they do a V formation. They constantly do that later on, but it's epic. This the v formation is pretty cool looking, yeah. So they morph, they go to downtown, they fight the putties. Uh, Scorpina shows up, fights Scorpina. 
Babu and Squat show up for some reason, and Babu Squat tells him to kick his ass because he's fucking his asshole there for some reason. Yeah, that is that is something that happens. Yeah. Yeah, I believe this is the part where we cut back to the youth center and we get Malcolm's favorite bulk and skull moment. Yeah. Cut to the ball. Uh, to the oh yeah, with with uh the 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 juice bar crumbling uh are all around him and then we get the the, the t- <laughs> seriously the, the one of the most genius things these two have ever done together. Bulk, we got to get going the place is coming down. I'm not finished with my ice cream yet. <laughs> Now I'm finished. Down. And literally as the eye beam for above them falls on the counter. <laughs> yeah, so everybody's jogging nicely outside. Shout out to Linkar for that. Uh Bulk mm-hmm. stops Skull and says, like, we gotta get on this bus. It's the quickest way out. Really? A bus is the quickest way out? Okay. Well, if you've seen the movie Speed Skull. Back in the command center, uh the Green Ranger just creeps on in again. <laughs> And, uh, and and removes Alpha's butt plug. And Alpha just bends on over, and Zordon was like, "Why? Just why?" Uh, then we go back to the city. See Rita. I don't. It's, like, it's just ridiculous seeing her on this tricycle. It's just so ridiculous. <laughs> it's like a penny farthing tricycle. All I'm hearing is da 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 da. So yeah, we cut back to Skull driving the bus. As we get a bit more fun in the bus, because. Skull is basically like, yeah, I don't have my driver's license. How do you think I'm doing? And Bulk says, I think you're driving like a psychopath. And then Skull says, oh, that's a nice compliment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the Rangers show up and Goldar picks up the uh, picks up the bus. He's playing around with it. Obviously, they would be dead by the way, but they're just rummaging around. In there. They're just they're just yeah, flinging around in the bus and fucking Goldar is just like oh yes, it's not just civilians they're two little friends of yours. <laughs> These are cops. They're buddies of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite, my favorite part of this sequence is like, my god they've got bulk and skull and then Trini just goes oh no! <laughs> it's like, oh what a nice, freak nice. Cake. Yeah, nice VO. And then we cut into the uh into the bus. Bulk and Skull are still fucking maneuvering around, and uh, Bulk says, "I want my mommy," and Skull says, "Yeah, I want your mommy." They're amazing. Uh, Apparently, that was an improv spot as well by Jason Narvi. It's very I good. They get away, I can't believe they got away with so much of that shit. Yeah, it's pretty awesome how much they got away with. Got back to the command center. Zordon is always coming back. You can barely hear him. Oh, and he's like, Tommy, Tommy. Yeah, no, Tommy is still uh, trying to do, like, f- he's trying to move Zordon to a completely different dimension so that he can never come back to the tube. <laughs> this is the part where we get the second, Tommy, no. Tommy, no. <laughs> I forgot there was a second one. I have to put, I have to point this out because it came up in my notes as they're talking about how the Power Rangers can't stop the Green Ranger or Rita. Now, <laughs> Alpha gets up like Linda McMahon at WrestleMania X7, and Alpha, like I said, gets up and he creates a force field around around Tommy, and then goes back to trying to reestablish the connection with uh, with Zordon. All while Tommy is just trying to basically bully him and neg him. He's negging Alpha now. <laughs> He's like trying to gaslight Alpha into thinking he is Alpha isn't doing enough and isn't good enough. He's such, he's such a dick. Yeah, so they get the Zords and the first the first time ever... Wait, sorry, hold on. They get the Zords, they make a Megazord and catch the bus right before Bulk and Spell die. They, would have been... they catch the bus, but even the catching of the bus would have killed Vulcan Skull. They, they've they cheated death like 27 times, so they're probably like top priority on death's next list in Final Destination 6. Uh, <laughs> and Bulk goes like, pinch me, I think we're dead. And Skull pinches him and he goes like, oh, but wait, we're alive, we're alive. Yeah, and then they just cry and hug each other. Yeah, so the Megazord fights Goldar, the eclipse happens. Orpina shows up and turns into a giant scorpion in her monster, her monster form. form, which is honestly a cool looking form. Yeah. It is a cool form, but I prefer her human form more. That's what, like, Obviously, I really because you can it. fuck it. No, it's just cooler, you degenerate. <laughs> 
So the eclipse happens and the Megazord is down because of the eclipse. Solar powered and they're screwed. Alpha tries to find some kind of code to bring back Zordon. Tries to... uh, Rita uses her magic to teleport Tommy to the fight from the, from the force field. And then this is the third time she makes someone grow in this episode, in this part. Uh, cause she makes, she makes Goldar grow. Then she makes Scorpina grow. And then she makes Tommy grow and we get giant Namek. I mean, Ranger. The first time you see that. Uh, I think yeah. we see it a couple seasons later, but it's a very rare for us to get giant Rangers. Yeah. But this is the first time they did it. Yeah. So Goldar and Tommy is work together and have this, and George goes straight to hell. Something I never <laughs> thought I'd see. Straight no, to no, no. hell. They go. They go to Ohio. Yeah, they go to Ohio. <laughs> yeah, Ohio. Yeah. So the gang is up on a mountain. And the Zords die, and Austin. I mean, goddamn it! Yeah, Jason says, "Oh, was the Zords? Oh no! <laughs> oh no way! There goes our Zords, dude. Oh, we gotta go to the bodega and get a new one." Yeah, that point. So it looks like Arena is one. Rangers go back to the command center. Uh, Alpha says, "Like, oh." I put something in the code that will show us or shows yeah. up. It just the pixels slowly start defragging, and then you finally see the obvious. It was Tommy the whole time. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And the, specifically, the shot they use of the rotating Tommy, like just slowly rotating in the in the light, the lighting. It just reminds me of the new generation Brett commercial, where the kid <laughs> yells down the hallway. Brett! It you know, weird. it's Sorry, scary ahead. how on the money you are. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's kind yeah, of my... it's kind of a beautiful thing that happens to me occasionally. <laughs> just like, Brad! and then you just see Tommy with the glasses. This trope that happens in storytelling where you, the, the characters are supposed to act stupid and oblivious for yeah. something that is incredibly obvious to the viewer is just something that really bothers me and often sours me on a lot of things. Yeah, you're going to get mm -hmm. a lot of that. I just, I just don't like poorly written television or stories. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of that during this entire run. It's not the first time. I, I, this, is, this is the first time. Yeah. So with that, we got Green Bull Part 5, Breaking the Spell, the final episode. Uh, so we start out with the gang finally figure out that Tommy and they're going, like, how could it be? We just met the guy two days ago. We know about him, but really yeah, we don't. We know. <laughs> you know, can't like, do what this the to fuck? us. They're acting like they've known him for years because Zach goes like, how can he do this to us? You just met him two days ago. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we cut back to uh, Rita's palace and they're celebrating. Hey, we got, did it. It's like, the Rangers are they're done. They're drinking. By the way, I just want to point out that Babu says they're all drinking cranberry and oyster juice. Ew. Yeah, that's disgusting. <laughs> that's a delicacy of many from the east coast of Canada. Yeah, I mean, it's basically just Clamato they're drinking. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I guess that is it. Okay. Yeah, no, it's basically just like Clamato with cranberry at this point. Yeah. And in this scene, we also get a lot of uh, Goldar just staring down uh, Scorpina's uh, bodice. You're supposed to just take a peek after a poke. You were like you just put a quarter in one of those big metal things on top of the Empire State Building. Just staring at her tits, basically. Really? Scorpina's drinking, and uh, Goldar is just looking down at her, and uh, you can just kind of see that the head is tilted down just enough where it's logical that he's staring at her tits. Just a peek. <laughs> just a peek. We cut to the command center, and Alpha's saying, well, I have nothing for you guys. You got to go figure this out on your own. So we cut to the two spar. We're on the TV news. You show Goldar destroying the city, and everyone's acting nonchalantly like, oh, no, look at no, that No, they're guy. just what they're they're just watching Jew Ranger. It's okay. Yeah, that too. But the one guy in the background is like, "Oh my God, look at that guy! The size of that guy! <laughs> Jesus Christ, making me laugh all the time! Look at the size of that guy!" <laughs> yeah. Kimberly goes up to her and he's like, "Hey, have you seen Tommy?" He's like, "Yeah, he's right over there, just beating the shit out of the weight machine over there." Oh, you forgot that. Uh, there's also in this part where. Kimberly's like, I can't believe that this is happening. Ernie's like, thank God for the Power Rangers. And then Bulk's like, Power Rangers? 
thank thank us. If anything, we were right there and we helped the Power Rangers beat that gold guy. And then Skull Bulk is and then they think about it. Bulk is like Skull is just like, yeah, we should be on TV. And then Bulk they just do a, a close up on Bulk's face that looks pretty funny. And he's like, yeah, yeah. TV. Kim yeah. goes over to Tommy. And I think that's it for Bulk and Skull for the five parter. And I gotta say, in one of the best scenes ever coming up, Kim goes over to Tommy, who's just anger fucking the weight machine. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's just it. It's like if he were doing it just like two percent angrier, he would trigger that death from Final Destination three, where the weights clap down on his head. Kim goes like, "I know you're the Green Ranger," and Tommy just looks like he's about to snap a neck. Goes like, "Well, Pink Ranger." To know that every one of you is gonna die. See ya. And his eyes glow. And, <laughs> they're, damn. They're 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 both just talking very openly about their ranger identities in public. Oh yeah, it's like this is one of many things that they do. You were breaking one of the three rules. Oh, and the best Zord ever. Uh, Dragon Zord debut. Yeah. Here it is. A B. Gold goes like if she if wants to bring it, gonna bring it. Raise the it's kaiju. Cooler looking Mecha Godzilla. It is really just Mecha Godzilla, but cooler. Yeah, because it's, ba- yeah, it's basically is Godzilla, but he's coming from the water and all, just destroying this. No, Mecha Godzilla. Specifically Mecha Godzilla, because nothing is cooler than OG Godzilla. Yeah. He yes, you can't beat Godzilla. He has his drill on his tail, which is awesome. He's just fucking up shit left and right. He's got the cool, like, five red light design on his chest. Yeah. And picks up one of those, uh, uh, what's it called? Those things that blow smoke? Smokestacks. Smokestack. Just takes a big bite out of it, like a candy cane. Yeah, it just shatters. That's such a great moment. Yeah. Uh, Green Ranger shows up with his infamous dragon dagger. Da, 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 da. Which I'm still thinking, so, how the hell is he playing that if he, ha- if he has a mouth guard? So I own the Green Ranger Morpher, but I need the Dragon Dagger. I just, I, oh man. I need it with a passion. Now, this is a question you just asked, Andreas. How does he play it, despite the fact that his mouth on his helmet is clearly closed? Yeah. I think I have an answer for this. Okay. It's basically just a Saxa boom. Oh yeah, the button and... where he presses the button and the thing goes off. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. I got it. Uh, years later, I finally get an answer. Like the, and I still need to answer the clam theory. Uh, Jack Black machine. should be casted as Tommy in the Power Rangers movie scenes, and then Jack and then Jack Black plays Saxaboom on the Dragon Dagger. There was no other choice. He finally answered my question. Now I just need to answer to the goddamn clam shells in Demolition Man. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Not again! So uh, we come back to the command center. Oh, Have that in your mind. Well, talking about a command center, uh, Alpha puts in some coordinates because he thinks he can find Zordon in a certain area. Got back to the Rangers and Austin is going like, "God, I wish Tommy would have told us that it was him." Now I'm doing the goddamn voice. I hate you, man. <laughs> hey, man, what, what are you doing? I am walking here. <laughs> <laughs> Trini runs in from the from right from somewhere, and she goes like, "Oh, there's a uh, big giant monster attacking business district." Which they finally said it's a business. So the Rangers morph, and they go to downtown, and Vader shows up, and uh, the Dragon Zord has these uh, amazing rocket finger blasters. Jesus. Oh no, that that's that's we're that's still a bit later because that's when uh that's when the Zords come back. Oh no, it's like when they come in, like he's doing that. And oh no, he does do it. So Rita is like saying, "Oh no, things are going down. They're back. What's going on?" Uh, so the Green Ranger tells summons the Dragon Zord to just destroy everything. Real. Uh, Austin Jason says, "Like, oh damn, we can't do anything. Zords are gone." Alpha back in the command center goes like, oh, I found you, Zordon. Zordon finally pops up. He's like, yeah, summon the Zords. You need to finish this bastard. Oh, we don't have the Zords. The Zords were destroyed. They were sent to Ohio. Let me handle that. I can get them back from Ohio. 
I have in my extended warranty. <laughs> They're hanging out in my Airbnb in Ohio. <laughs> like, well, no, you're talking about how uh, the fucking the Green Ranger earlier oh, took yeah. away their extended warranty. <laughs> I have the extended warranty. <laughs> so now that Zordon's back, their belt buckles start shining up, and they get teleported <laughs> to Ohio. And the Zords are back. Reverse that glorious footage. Yeah, reverse the footage of them sinking into the lava. Yeah. Uh, Rita's not happy. She looks like she's about to cry. Uh, T-Rex and a dragon sword start fighting, like Zord on Zord action, which is amazing. Which is a very fun scene. And I think, like, behind the uh, the, the karate fight at the very beginning of, the, of this, this is my favorite fight scene in the entire five-parter. Yeah. Isn't this also like the T Rex does some kind of ninja move? You know, the T Rex does a stupid like, huh? Both legs extended out jump. It does a stupid jump and then drop kicks the Dragon Zord. The Dragon Zord is down for a couple of minutes. He's taking a break because I. Uh, we couldn't get the Dragon Zord doing a drop kick. The Megazord gets initiated, and the Megazord yep. just decides to pick up the Dragon Zord and eat him. Yeah, he he does the Super Mario 64 where he picks up the Dragon Zord by the tail, swings him around, and then goes, So long, gay Dragon Zord. <laughs> <laughs> Throws him into a mountain rock formation that he obviously cut beforehand. Yeah, and then this is the no way. This is the no way part. Because yeah, hey. Jason basically yells out, uh, Hey, dude, you know what? We're going to destroy the Soda Darkness now. I hope you like that. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then to- a voice that is supposed to be Tommy just goes, No way! That was not Jason David Frank, it's some random dude. Some random, it's some random Green Ranger dude. <laughs> <laughs> Jason gets out of the Megazord and fights Tommy one-on-one. And uh, he just blasts him. They have a sword fight. And it looks like... Tommy just... Yeah, Tommy's just kicking the crap out of him until, like, you cut to American footage where Jason just Destroys the Sword of Darkness by just a pistol. Yeah, just shoots the Sword of Darkness. It, it evaporates, basically. And then... Bring uh, Tommy from the evil control. Tommy demorphs, is not is not evil anymore. And then <laughs> the, the, another baffling scene where the four five rangers V-formation up, and then they're all like, okay. And Jason's like, okay, guys, let's morph. And then uh, they let's unmorph. <laughs> Yeah, let's morph, yeah. And then he goes talks to Tommy. He's like, hey, we need a good guy on our team. Down. You're a good man. You're a good man, Tommy. How was your mother? You're a good fighter. <laughs> hey, listen, you're, you're a good fighter. You you, you got the good muscle. Uh, I need you to join the Power Rangers. <laughs> you now all are going to the skull corner. You're, now he sounds like Tommy <laughs> was <you>. so. <laughs> oh, hi, Tommy. <laughs> Oh, hi, Tommy. Okay, you're definitely going to the skull corner. And we get the glorious, the beautiful first morph of... Oh, wait, wait, uh, hold on. We get the handshake first. Before we get there. Uh, they shake hands, and like Jason's going like, Hey, I hope you don't replace me someday down the line. Tommy goes yeah. like, no promises. We, we, get, we get the handshake, and then Zordon... And Alpha are watching this from the viewing globe, and then Zordon's like, look, Alpha, we're seeing history in the making. Yeah, it is truly history in the making. Which is a very profound line, considering the history of the series. And then we got Jason going like, okay, guys, it's a wolf. Um, why am I look, sounding like Christopher walking out? Uh, morphing time. And then, and then we get the iconic first morph with all six rangers. Is there a putty fight, or do we just get the morph and then we cut to yeah, them do. back at the command center? Uh, no, they just uh, pose. Second song on the Dragon Dagger, it just sounds like Kanye West's All of the Lights. And Jason goes like, well, let's check it out. It's uh, it's awesome. This new dragon, I swear. Hey, dude, this new, this new dragon is buff as hell. Yeah, and Rita, we cut back to Rita. She's mad as hell. It's like, ah, oh, damn it. Does she say a headache? Uh, I want to say we do get one. I'll have to double check, but I do think we get one. If we do get one, then we're at nine. So we cut back to the command center and uh, Jordan's like, congratulations, you got the guy that almost killed me back on his team. He's like, I'm sure I'm not going to be uh, looking over my head. 
after this. Okay. And she goes like, I'm sorry, I had to say that. But yeah. Yeah. Um, she goes like, Tommy, you are now a new member. So you got to go with the three rules. You want to become a ranger. Nobody. And then we get a reprisal of the three rules. Yep. Um, don't use uh, the power for your own personal gain. Uh, don't reveal your identity to everyone, uh, to anyone, and only escalate a fight if uh, it calls for it. Yeah. If Rita forces you to, basically. Yeah. So, uh, they do a high five in slow motion. You forgot it ends on a 90s freeze frame of them all jumping up in the air. Yeah, that too. So, so before we each have our individual wrap-ups... I am going to discuss this, or, or not discuss this, but I want to bring this up specifically for uh, for Adam. Now that we finished Green with Evil, let's talk about Lord Draken. Okay, so this is new to me. In the comics, um, basically, there was a storyline called Shattered Grid. Uh, there was a storyline before that that introduced Lord Draken, but Shattered Grid was basically his big story. Um, Lord Draken is an alternate universe version of Tommy, where basically after the Sword of Darkness uh, was destroyed, Tommy okay. basically left. Uh, he's like, I need to think this over. And he ends up joining Rita for good, like actually, like, um, and ends up becoming evil without being mind controlled. And, um, it ends up to a big fight, whatnot, which ends up uh, with most of the Rangers dead, and the I believe Tommy takes on the power of the White Ranger, and that ends up uh, fusing the two powers together after Tommy defeats him and kills him, and he ends up becoming basically the most powerful Lord of Rangers, basically Lord Draken, and I think Rita everybody. falls, and he basically becomes the Lord of all evil. It, it was basically a trailer for the comics that he, uh, he did a live-action film uh, filming for. Yeah, is this it? an official thing? It's, it's like this isn't a fan project, is it? Uh, no, this is uh, an official story in the Power Rangers comic. It's, it's a different timeline, obviously. Yeah. Yes, and it would have been really cool if, while he was still alive, they would gotten to do that for the show itself. But unfortunately, it's just going to stay uh, in the realm of comics for now. You're going to have to send me this 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 trailer after so I can watch it. Yeah, yeah I'll send it to you when I get the chance, Adam. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so now that that is over, uh, final thoughts on Green with Evil. I'm honestly on the same boat here. It's like, what is there to say? Like, every single episode here, this five-parter introduces um, an aspect of the Green Ranger lore and saga in some way, shape, or form. Even, like, with uh, the stuff with Jason and Tommy, which lasts for a while as well throughout the show so honestly yeah again just absolutely killed it this is probably i'll say it again the first kids tv show five-parter and probably still the best one i went into this five-parter knowing it was a pivotal moment for not just this season but for the entire series of power rangers because it was the introduction of Jason David Frank. It's the introduction of one of the most prolific people to be related to the city series that is not named Haim Saban. Uh, I went into this wanting to like it. And I'm not saying I hated it. I didn't dislike it. There are parts I really did like. Like the, the fights, the choreography has gotten significantly better. Uh, some of the dumb meme shit in between bits and pieces of the serious storytelling was very fun. And uh, obviously every season, every scene with Bulk and Skull on it is five star comedy. I'm feeling like I might offend someone with saying that this, this isn't good. It's not bad by any means. It's definitely not awful. There are a lot of, there are a lot of bad storytelling elements and a lot of just, poor decisions with 
the creation of this five-parter that make me think that Haim Saban as a company was a bit too ambitious when they made this. There's a lot of there's a lot of inconsistencies. There's a lot of voice acting inconsistencies. There's a lot of small nitpicks that just sort of add up into being not a bad experience, but a lot of something I cannot say is a good there's experience. A lot of small I have to call it mediocre. I'm sorry. It's not bad. It's just not good either. Uh, but like I will openly say it was it, it is a very hyped up five parter. And again, I am a Power Rangers fan of the middle of the road stuff when it comes to all the Power Rangers stuff as a whole. I will openly say again. It's a 90s show. Like, it's like going back and watching Full House of the dialogue, the inconsistent. Uh, like, especially for, I want to say this is a non union yeah, uh, kids show as well. So, you're definitely not going to get 110% care and effort when it comes to back, uh, back checking. Oh yeah, no, I I I understand that, and I do completely get those sort of things. But that's like it's just in how do I how do I say this in the previous episodes that I've watched for this series with you guys, of uh, which is everything before this. Mm -hmm. There, even when there was like weird cheapness or weird 90s editing or weird other things that just seemed not like not the best choice. It still felt like it was overall a fun environment and a, you know, like something that I could derive the positive from. I think that this is just they were trying to be serious too fast. Yeah, they wanted to And different. 17 episodes into the first sorry, 17 episodes into the fir into the first season of your new series is not where a five-parter should be. If this five-parter was 30 episodes later, I feel like I would like it a lot more because I feel like they would have learned a lot more about how they were doing things and would have been able to iron out some of those issues that just kind of detract from the quality of this five-parter. And again, I will state that this is not bad. It's just not good either. It is purely mediocre. I have a neutral feeling on this. Yeah, it's just, just not my favorite. Because you are like the neutral guy in it for the first time in today's world, modern era. I completely understand mm -hmm. where you're coming from. I'm going to give you this one, but I swear to God, Adam, if you stay on the contrarian path, I'm going to keep you permanently in the skull corner. That's I'm it. just stating my opinion. Like, <laughs> I've said, that's what, that's what this whole situation, oh. that's what, that's what I know. Be if you state yeah. your opinion on the contrarian path more than six times in a row, I will beat you. Beat you with Look. a stick. I hate I contrarianism not. so fucking much. Yeah, but I'm not being a contrarian for the sake of being a contrarian. That's just my oh. honest to God opinion. No, I know. Again, I'm telling you, I'm not talking about this situation right now. Okay. I'm talking about all contrarianism. Then as yes, a whole. I 100% agree with you. contrarianism. I... I'm talking to you, Justin, from Cinema Massacre. You know what you did? That's everything. Oh uh, God! Because we needed another breakdown, I guess. <laughs> so was that before uh, Malcolm pops a blood vessel? Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoy. Well, recap ahead. Next time we're going to actually get back into some normal, hopefully normal filler, and hopefully a bit more of a, you know, me understanding how Tommy works in a more filler esque context. Yes. And so I am I'm excited. So with that, I, I hope dead, all of you Adam. and uh, that has been Andreas and he's the doif and may the power protect you all.